What's going on guys? This is Mia Sin. This is going to be probably one of the biggest OCG metagame breakdowns I have covered in God knows how long. Uh, this, this video is going to be so freaking incredibly good. So 219 top performing decks from 46 mother freaking tournaments that were held in like the span of one week. So this week was like super, super competitive and OCG players were like on fire so yeah i will be covering pretty much everything into details also giving you guys some other form of deck list that uh, will not be shown in just this article so before this video starts make sure you like and subscribe check me out on twitch and instagram and now let's jump right into this magnificent so of course when we look at the pizza uh two very big slices of the pizza rather four if you're eating a large pizza uh or uh, you know uh played dominated by splite so 52 percent that's actually a little less than last time. So, no, sorry, what the hell? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, clearly, the splite was actually more represented before. It was 49 plus 7.8, so 56.8. Whereas now, it actually downgraded to uh, 52.1. Not that much. It's still a tier 0 deck because it's over uh, 50%. Obviously, if it becomes like 75%, 90%, then it would become like extremely unfair and degenerate, but... Uh, you know the, the, the best deck is unfair be, uh, when the number one best deck is double, more than double, um, from, you know, others. So, yeah, usually others is, like, tier one, but now, <laughs> I'm obviously just kidding, but you get what I'm saying, but now, like, the, the number one best deck is ridiculous, so, yes, it's it's by far the best, but the, the, the other decks are also very terrifying, and uh, don't underestimate them, and some of them are brand new, uh, so, Tier Laments, <laughs> speaking of brand, branded Tier Laments is the, the most uh, popular build of Tier Laments. So, I think 15 out of 19 are playing uh, branded Tier Laments. It's just that these two others are also playing with Fossil, and this one is uh, with Lawn Mowing. So, 60 card build, that grass looks greener. And only four are going with the completely pure build. Personally, I would go with this build. I think it's actually the most logical way to play branded Tier Laments. Uh, well, sorry, Tier Laments, but yeah, it, very, very nice deck. And the deck is uh, just an upgraded version of Branded Despia. It's it's literally just uh, the best of both worlds, if that can make any sense. And the third best deck would be uh, Exorcist. So, I don't know who actually told me that in the live stream. I think it might have been Al Albitsky, but I could be wrong. Uh, so yeah, he told me that Exorcist was now the second best deck in the OCG. I was like, bro, you're full of shit. There's no way that can be uh, right. And he was actually not that far off. It's really, really good now. And the reason for that is because the new support is actually terrifying. I think uh, the, the card is Malpha. It's so freaking good. It's like a one-card starter. It single-handedly makes you like a rank 4 and gets you a search. It makes it does everything on its own. It's such a good card. But yeah, the deck is overpowered going second. It can play a lot of hand traps. It's obviously pretty good going first because it can play a lot of trap cards that get you a lot of value. Like there's a... I think it's Vadis. It summons freaking two monsters from deck. And doesn't negate the effect of those monsters. And all the Exorcister monsters can be like very dangerous threats when your opponent interacts with the graveyard. And uh, come on, tell me, who doesn't need the grave? Who who doesn't interact with the graveyard in 2022? Flunderies is like the only exception. So yeah, Exorcister is like the best anti-meta deck in this format by such a long shot. It's not even funny. Like, it, it is so much better than all the other decks that people might be playing. But, um, yeah, no, th there are still some, obviously, very uh, competitive decks. So, Branded Despia, six of them are Tier Laments, Branded Despia. It's it's more of like a Tier Lament deck featuring Branded Fusion than it really is Despia. So, this might be a little misleading. And then we also have uh, Brave Token, Branded Despia, Lawn Mowing, Tier Laments, Branded Despia. Okay, so, basically... Th that old Despia deck that, uh, well, right now it's not old for us in the TCG that people are playing right now, is going to be power crept when we're going to get the Tier Laments cards because, man, bro, they just do so much. Like, all of those monsters literally have fantastic graveyard effects when they're sent to the graveyard. And Reino Heart is a, obviously a one-card starter. Uh, Kid Kalo searches a freaking Tier Laments card. The big boss monster freaking shuffles back cards on summon or like it's basically like Shurig the Ominous Amen, the Tri Brigade Link 4. So yeah, very freaking terrifying deck. And obviously in the right hands, it's probably like insanely broken. And obviously we have Edlich, never gonna die. Same thing with Flanderese and then Splite Tri Brigade, whatever it is what it is. Drytron Mr. Rune. Okay, alright. Yeah, that's also very spicy. Luna! Alright, now this is where I'm going to show you guys a deck list. So 
I don't know who played this deck, but uh, oh my god, it's actually so freaking cool. So I think you guys know every single card in the main deck for the most part, except maybe this card and this card. So this is kind of like a new Nibiru, quote unquote, but it only tributes monsters that activated their effects on your own turn. And this card, I think it's like Sauge de Fleur or something like that. So uh, yeah, it's like this card, bro. It's 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 actually kind of hilarious, but it actually has a really good effect. You can target one monster you control and one card on the field. Special summon this card from your hand. And if you do destroy them, if this card is sent from the field to the grave, you can target one other monster in the grave, shuffle it into the deck. Then add one level one plant monster from your deck or grave to hand. I'm not gonna lie, this effect will never come up in the um, the decks that will be using this card because the level one plant monsters that you can search are not necessarily super great. And then you can only use each effect of Sauge de Fleur once per turn. Just the fact that you can summon this card as a level 8 monster that can facilitate, uh, I don't know, all of your Dingirsu, Harb Harbinger, Dragaloo Beyond plays to OTK your opponent and also destroys cards your opponent controls in the process, such as Skill Drain because it resolves in the hand. So, um, exactly like the Virtual World monsters is definitely no joke. And this deck is actually pretty anti-meta. This, this is basically Grand Maju, but instead of playing Grand Maju, you're playing Fairy Tail Luna. So, the OCG has been doing this for a while, whereas right here in the TCG, Yishan McNabb, the legendary legend himself, uh, kind of popularized a completely different version. Well, not completely, but it's basically, again, the same thing, but we play Pot of Desires with Grand Maju and different stuff, but for the most part, this, this deck is like the same thing. And another thing that Yishan actually popularized with the, was the Golden Castle of Stromber uh, Stromberg, and I don't think the OCG is really playing that. But uh, apart from that, yeah, pretty similar. A very cool deck nonetheless, though. Anyways, after that, we have Magician. Mathmech, very disappointing. I was expecting Mathmech to be way better. But I think this is uh, this is meaningless because Mathmech is still a ridiculously terrifying deck with a new support. Uh, I can ex actually expect Cybers to become Tier 1 very, very soon. Circular is a really, really good card. So, yeah, don't look at two Mathmech and be like, bro, the deck sucks. That is not, like... A correct way to you know view things uh, so yeah definitely don't be surprised when it'll be better than that and then marinsa salamangrid sky striker uh yeah sure fair enough splite evil twin that is very disappointing the deck actually became so much worse for like no reason it was it was so good before so yeah uh sword soul uh, a little pathetic i'm not gonna lie adventure three axis synchro <laughs> adventure dry bro all those decks in the tcg people are like they're super spicy sometimes. People get YCS stops with those decks. And then in the OCG, it's like 1, 1, 1, 114. <laughs> it's, it's actually hilarious. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Anyways, Dinomorphia, Dinosaur, and Dimian Generator. Wow. Okay, yo. Shoutouts to True King of All Generators if, you watch, if you're watching this video. Uh, Lawn Mowing, Danger, Danger Phantom, Night Burning Abyss. Yo. Oh my god. Uh, Lawn Mowing, Punk, at Emancipator. Gee, freaking spicy. The punk engine is, should be, like, overplayed, man. It's so good. And Lon... Oh, oh yeah, a lot of... And basically, cards.deck. <laughs> Hero, Mathmic, Agnister, Megalith, Punk. Uh, pure Punk. Interesting. And then, okay, this is basically based, and it's actually not even that good. This makes no freaking sense, bro. In the TCG, this deck is, like, up here. And in the OCG, it's ass. <laughs> I don't understand. And Rika, I'm actually going to show you guys the Rika decklist. It's very spicy. Uh, so it, it it does not even feature Sun of Alon cards. And for some reason, this freaking boy, this legend right here, is citing Cyber Dragon with Mega Fleet. Absolute freaking Chad. So uh, <laughs> moving forward, Splite Agent, Splite Melfi. Okay, I've seen a lot of comments of people saying, yo, Splite can actually work with, with Melfi because they're level 2s and stuff like that. But I think you'd rather play in, in like Evil Twin or just pure Splite with Frogs. Uh, yeah, Tier Elements Orcus, Tier Ons, uh, Tier Ons ABC, very disappointing. This deck should be better. Uh, Tri Brigade Lyrilusk, absolutely pathetic. The deck is way better in the OCG than in the, it is in the TCG. And for some reason, we're actually doing better than them. So, bruh. And then Umi, Zephra. <laughs> Yo, looking at all those decks at one. And then this boy at 114 just makes my day. Anyway, Splite. Okay, people are finally no longer stupid. There was, a, I think, a few months ago or like a year ago, I made a video on Deck Devastation Virus saying like how it was one of the best cards you could side deck because any deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! can trigger it because... Any access to a Link 2 monster would make Codebreaker Virus Swordsman, which is a generic dark monster with 2k or more attack. So you just make that, this monster, and then you deck dev your opponent and everybody loses. 
And believe it or not, every single splite monster there is uh, loses the deck devastation virus, basically. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, they're all below 1500 attacks. So if you resolve this, you win against Splite, you win against Flunderies, you win against freaking Evil to win, you, you win against everyone, and you also look at their draws and make them lose cards. So the fact that you also know what hand your opponent has makes it so even Dark Ruler, Forbidden Job are just no longer enough, and the only way to side for deck devastation virus is with the unsearchable, sacky, random one of Red Reboot. But, like, it's so freaking random because you have to, like, side it in, assuming and hoping that you draw it only when your opponent has deck dev. Otherwise, it's just gonna sit there doing nothing. And if you have Red Reboot, your opponent doesn't have deck dev, and your opponent still made, like, freaking three negates, you're gonna lose to those three negates instead of losing to deck dev. Right now, what layers in the OCG are doing is that they're taking the maxi challenge. They're accepting it willingly because they are resolving deck dev on their opponent's draw phase. And people are literally discarding 20 cards for hand, like, every single freaking time deck dev gets triggered because it doesn't matter what you have again, you're all gonna lose every single one of your cards. Look at this, man. Every single hand trap, quite literally, in Yu-Gi-Oh! loses to deck dev outside of Skullmeister uh, and Nibiru, of course, the other, uh, the only hand traps that actually have high attack. But, like, every single other main deck monster, that's actually incredible. That, that is so impressive, man. Like, the only way I could actually maybe potentially see you, like, having a chance at per maybe winning would be if you hold, like, Splite Starter and you have, like, other form of board-breaking cards. But, bro, like, with only one Splite sp Starter, you're actually not even doing, like, that much. So, I don't know. Deck Dev is actually 10 billion IQ. We should be seeing this in the TCG as well because if your win condition is siding in back for removal, I'm sorry, my man, but... Uh, sorry, board-breaking cards it's just not gonna be enough because people can always use lingering cards like that in order to cuck you completely or D-Barrier or whatever, but people have just realized that deck dev was better than D-Barrier. Now, there is another build of Splite that actually really caught my eye, and I'm a big fan of this. It is with the Dark Summoning Beast, or rather Dark Beckoning Beast, of the, um, kind of the Sacred Beast or something like that from the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And it's actually pretty cool because one card, I think, uh, gets you a rank 2 monster just like that. So people are doing this play instead of the Deep Sea Diva combo. And yeah, by the way, people are citing Solemn Warning the, and Sol Solemn, Judgment, Solemn Judgment rather in the uh, side deck in order to beat uh, annoying cards that you can't really, uh, I don't know, like deal with usually with your engine. And another card that I really wanted to talk about was Artemate Slay. So I also made a card review on this card saying that it would most likely be a staple in the side deck in a lot of formats because it trades very well. Your opponent can't respond to this card. So obviously if you have something like, uh, I don't know, Toad, it's not gonna do anything. And I don't think you can sell him judgment in this card either. So you can send your opponent to the gates and it sends, not the, doesn't destroy. And also you send your other cards. Like if you're sending like a Phoenix Enforcer, you can also send an Entis and then pop another card. So this card is actually really freaking awesome. And uh, by the way, in case you're wondering why is, uh, why are people playing this card and not Deep Sea Diva? It's because people can actually make number 65 a Jin Buster with it, which negates uh, Hand Shop, so that's why you can actually full combo. I just forgot to explain that. So, yeah, that's it for the Splite deck list. And now for Tier Elements, very spicy deck. So people are turboing out uh, Reino Heart, which uh, is basically a one-card combo because you Foolish for any of the other Tier Elements monsters, and then you can Fuse right away, and then and then make Kid Kalos search for the Meta Noise, and then that's going to allow you to Book of Moon your opponent's monster, and also Foolish your deck for a Tier Laments, which allows you to Fuse again for another monster. And if you have the Field Spell, you can pop a card on your opponent's turn. You can actually do so much, it's crazy. But the synergy with the Branded Fusion engine is actually ridiculously insane, because you send a Tier Laments monster, you trigger Lubellion, and then you trigger your Tier Laments, which allows you to make Mirror Jade, but also your Kid Kalos. So with a just Branded Fusion, you do so much. Uh, granted, obviously, you get the you get to discard a card with the Lubellion that would allow you to trigger the effect of your Tier Laments in your grave. Otherwise, you're not gonna have enough cards to, like shuffle back. But yeah, the deck definitely does have a very good grind game because of the fact that you're always shuffling back the same resources. So Fallen of Al Bazid one is way more than enough because you're all you're never banishing it. You're just shuffling it back. And yeah, it's it's actually kind of funny to see uh, Alba Renatus being played at two. You can actually summon it, but Albion doesn't even do that much in that build because you're not playing Branded in Red and Branded Exile, so you might as well play Alba Renatus and uh, contact fuse your opponent with, like, Dragon Monsters. If people are pl still playing Dragon Link, which I definitely don't recommend, I think that deck is garbage right now, because very specifically of this card. <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, and uh, obviously the the other interesting cards in the side decks, Drago Stapelia, another negate that people can make even without Super Poly, which is uh, kind of spicy. So yeah, in conclusion, Splite is still tier 0, obviously, no freaking shit. Yeah, obviously the next best deck is Tier Laments, not by, well, by a long shot, but it's still such a good deck that you're basically forced to respect it. Otherwise, you might actually lose to it because uh, that deck is, is you know, it's it, I'm not going to say that it's trying to catch up to Splite, but if Splite gets nerfed, you might actually expect Tier Laments to be the number one best deck. Uh, for example, if we see Toad getting banned or something like that, or Gigantic Splite being bad because, uh, banned because MX Saber Invoker-esque cards have never been healthy for Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think every single one of those Xyz monsters always got banned. Like the freaking uh, Wind-Up Monster, Invoker, Salaman, Great Mirage, Talio. It's just a matter of time before this one gets banned as well, the Gigantic Splite. And the fact that it protects yourself from Nibiru is just absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah, DD Crow is actually seeing more play because it's really good to banish the Ruin and Toten against Splite. But also against Tier Laments, it's really good because the Tier Laments, when they trigger in the grave, they have to shuffle themselves back into the deck. Uh, so if you DD Crow, it can't shuffle itself back, so therefore you miss out on the fusion summoning aspect. And DD Crow actually trades really well. It's always better than like Valor or Ash or Ogre maybe sometimes, because you know for a fact that you can't uh, you can resolve it. Uh, and also you can draw multiples and still use it because it's not once per turn. And you can draw it for turn, and sometimes it might have value. If your opponent goes like Splite L, try to revive back my Toad, you go Nah, -ah, Chain D, Crow, Banish that Toad, and you can't get back another Negate that way. So that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.